doctors come and go into departments, and that is at various times. Minister Mtasa, I think, was the Minister of State for National Security from 2005 to 2008. That was uh, the first time he was minister. And yes, it is correct, during that period, we never uh, were into issues to do with mining as a department. Then after that, it was the Minister Sekiramai who was minister from 2009 to the year 2013. And then Minister Mtasa came back for a short stint from 2013 to 2014. Um, so really, those were the periods which are under consideration. Uh, I, I mean specifically, really, the period from about, I, I think, 2009, 2010 to about uh, 2011, 2012, and we were not with Minister Mtasa at that time. Allow me at this juncture, I think, to shed some light on uh, the Kusena Diamonds uh, mining project. Uh, so that I think once we remove that, questions can come, and if there are others who have to feed in more information, then that can be done. The context for investment or participation by a department like uh, the president's department into mining, it must be remembered, uh, is one which really has to be understood in the context of the economic situation which we were going through as a country at that time, the period which I'm making reference to. And uh, there were problems to be funded by Treasury because of those economic difficulties which we were going through and therefore we found it necessary to undertake certain <laughs> operations which could raise funding uh, to supplement the mega resources which were coming out of uh, uh, the Minister of Finance. And of course we are aware of Chia's why and the issue of diamonds uh, which was there and therefore we thought it was necessary to undertake in partnership with investors, uh, operations there. And so it was that uh, in the beginning we were able to find as a department someone who wanted to invest. And that was a company which was known as China International Fund. And so we partnered them and they were able to bring in some equipment which was worth about a uh, I think 10, up to about 10 million US dollars. That equipment comprised of a, a, the plant water supply system, <coughs> a, which included a 110 kVA generator, some 14,000 liter fuel tanks, two kilometers of pipeline, some office equipment, including uh, some air-conditioned sleeping quarters and offices for the staff, a canteen, a, another generator, 75 kVA, and about, uh, as I said, uh, two kilometers of pipeline. Then we, ha we also had some plant, which was a grizzler. That's a plant uh, for feeding stock into the density medium separator, a DMS. This particular DMS was about uh, 10 tons per hour in terms of its capacity. That is fairly small, and in fact it is deployed when you are doing some exploration work. Um, when you now look at the real operations themselves, you are looking at very big machines going to about uh, 100 tons per hour. And for, I think, the big boys, the Ombadas and so on, they ended up with DMS is of that, 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 that size, and in some cases perhaps not one, but quite a number of them. I am mentioning this so that we understand the, the, the scope and the scale of what the department was involved in. It was a very small plant, uh, 10 tons per hour. Um, and a number of other items which were brought in, earth-moving equipment, 
if, which was excavators, front end loaders, dump trucks, um, and various such equipment. So that, that's the equipment which went in, but not exceeding about 10 million US dollars. That particular investor, China International Fund, went in to do exploration, as I have indicated. The plant, the DMS, and most of the equipment were designed really for alluvial <coughs> diamond mining. The hope was that there would be alluvials which are easier to scoop up and then also to process, and not the conglomerate, uh, which was mentioned by Minister Shidakwa, which needs quite some huge investments for you to be able to go into the earth and then extract the rock there, smash it, and get the diamond out. So there it was, the investor went in, tried to find alluvials at claims which are claims D and H in Chiazwa, which when you compare with the other claims which are there, these were more on the periphery, and they were not really that, that rich. And in fact, we found that there were no alluvial diamonds, diamonds on those claims. And therefore, the investor, after doing some work, he decided that it was not a worthwhile investment and he decided to leave. The, that particular investor wanted to take this equipment out of the country at the time. We then said as a department that he could not do so because what we had been able to do was to clear that equipment. And, so, and therefore, the customs clearance which we did was our own contribution into the equipment. And so we refused uh, that he takes the equipment out of the country. And so, f first with a scenario where he could not take that equipment out, he ended up donating that equipment to the department. So there it is. We ended up with about $10 million worth of equipment in the camp which had been set up for diamond mining. We, as a department, were not experts in mining. If anything, perhaps we could do some security. And we then needed someone to partner with in mining. This is how we then came up with ZMDC. We then went into a joint venture with the ZMDC on a 50-50% basis and made it very clear that uh, we were not miners uh, they were the experts in mining. Could they do the mining? And we found ourselves with this equipment. Take it over. If there are any additional pieces you want, then secure that, but you mine. We provide security. And then we will be very happy to get the proceeds of that mining enterprise. So that is what basically happened. And this was during the period from 2011 when Minister Sekiramai was our minister. The, there was created a board of directors which was uh, set up. We, we looked at all the structures, issues of corporate governance and so on were very important. And so structures were set up. The person who became the chairman of the board was uh, the late Jonathan Kazura who was appointed to that position by the ZMDC because they were the lead partner here, being the experts in mining. <coughs> the general manager also was from ZMDC as were the finance executive and the plant manager. And, and basically, according to my story, really the ZMDC took over and, and they ran the mine. We provided some security, essentially. Now, what were the production statistics as was requested in the summons? The gem quality diamonds which were realized were some 833 uh, carats. Then near gem or semi-gem was only about 784.45 carats. Then industrials came to some... Uh, Let's see, 11,000 11, 
11,091,9 carats. The grand total coming to 13,989,95 carats. That is what was produced by the ZMDC from what we understand. The entire enterprise was there with some bits of equipment which were then procured by the ZMDC. Well, we understand that the mine when set up was worth more than the, the $10 million which I have made a reference to. But anyway, for present purposes, uh, those cars were sold, we understand, by the ZMDC. Um, the amount of money, there was a reserve price of about $650,597.27. But uh, the total amount which was realized was one million twelve thousand nine hundred and six and eight cents, which was uh, realized, and that that really wa wa was the money which was realized by the joint venture. <coughs> the money never came to the department. The money, as far as we understand, is with the ZMDC. We, we never got anything out of it. Uh, and as we moved on, then came the era of uh, consolidation, which was now towards the end of uh, the year 2013. Um, and, and basically the players now in the Minister of Mines were Minister Walter Chidakwa, then we had uh, Secretary Gujanga and Mr. Murangari, uh, Chair of the ZMDC, those became the players. And the point which we were raising as a department was that with consolidation coming online, uh, maybe it was time for us as a department to exit diamond mining. It had not benefited us anything really. But what we wanted from them and what I hope that the department will be able to get from the Consolidated Diamond Company would be perhaps something from the equipment which we contributed to that endeavor. Uh, we gave that equipment, ZMDC, now it's part of the equipment of the Consolidated Diamond Mine. Some evaluations would need to be done. And at one time, I think the equipment was now after depreciation and so on, estimated to be worth about six million dollars and i would be very happy if uh, the ministry and the consolidated company could perhaps give something to the president's department for that effort which it made to secure some investment into diamond mining from outside and we ended up with that equipment and the diamonds which were realized they have the diamonds anyway we never got the diamonds and that's the end of the story. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> my only um, point of clarity of question is with the entire intelligence that you have in the country, how do you not dictate to the diamonds where you reach? Oh. Well, I have said, I, I think that we are not experts in diamonds and in mining in general. That's the point I make. We applied for a concession. Yes, we knew that they were richer concessions and so on, but it was not for us to go and say, really, the decision by the Minister of Mines to allocate us a certain concession was wrong. We were allocated a concession, we accepted it and proceeded, as I have explained. Uh, if we had perhaps been given a richer concession, it might have been a different story. Something could have been realized. And I say this, I think, on the back of the structures which we set up and so on, and the way in which we tried to execute matters in the department in a very transparent and efficient manner. And in this case, anyway, I don't regret it. Because you know, we were able to realize something for our country. 
that amount of equipment which we ended up with, and the dam was the ZMDC it got. So we did something, we contributed something as the president's department under my leadership. Thank you. No, thank you, Chair. Um, what we are looking for as a committee ultimately is some um, $15 billion uh, worth of uh, revenue, um, which was realized from uh, diamonds. And uh, by extension, uh, the money that uh, was realized ultimately from all uh, diamonds um, uh, sales. Do you stand by your point that uh, part of that money would uh, be resident with uh, at the ZMTC, as you allude to? Because this is part of the revenue that was realized from the diamonds. Um, would you stick to your point that part of the $15 billion that you excavated and realized is with ZMTC as we speak? Mr. Chairman, my answer to that is an, an emphatic yes. I stand by my assertion. Thank you. Majita. <laughs> Pa vakanga vashaya ma diamonds pa claim ya taka puwai. Vakati yo vanga wakuda kutora equipment yao wabude wa end. Vashiti vane ma operations avai gona kuita kune zimu nyika ma Afrika. Saka it was equipment ya kanaka yanga iri nyoani and iri air portable. I think ndo inzgura waka shandisa. Istikati a ah, utinuruza panapa. Dog Vatati, Pamakawa and I, Makati Tita, Tikai Clear, Sakai contribution, Yedi Atakaita, Ya Yedutesi, Amchago, Naki Tora, Buddha Nayo from Zimbabwe. Saka Chaita, Tika Gumata win argument, Yedu Akata, all right, as we see Nate Chitorai, Dog Vatapo. Vakatipa and Vakatipa Vashifara. But Nyakata Upe Nuka, Muno Tauri Ran, Munano Tauros, Arkufunga, Iom Pindurao. This is to remember the Rumo Namriz, as she said, as she and if you go to Yakashata, I take a papa and Rest assured, no, it was fine. And is a sure the important thing is when you clear equipment, Munopea, beautiful Zimura, or whatever, Munoita contribution, Moti, Mane joined venture, equipment, Yaye Dutes. Then we are most angry to try to disentangle that. What in the actor is in the actor in the actor, but the church is which Musa Dar Vakatins Visa. I could go no doctor as Gadawa Takaid. Must I? 
Hello. Right. I, I thought, Mr. Chairman, that I had actually answered you. No, My, the, 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 issue here, the issue here was whether I should go in the, the Shona way to answer it also, because it became one question. It was in agreement that they give us, they donate, and it oh, was a donation. Okay. And a donation in law is in agreement. Okay, there is an offer okay, and you accept. Okay, yes. Not a written agreement, a verbal agreement. Okay, can we know the partner who would also want to invite them? China International Fund. I gave that name. Okay, so if you gave us the I did. Because it would be good for us to hear the other seconds. Thank you. I think we are done with that honorable uh Thank you, Chair. Sinira, <laughs> Already there were some operations which uh, the, the, the department uh, was doing. Uh, can the former DG explain to us why they didn't uh, inform the then minister, uh, Honorable Mutasi, considering that they, they had already started the operations uh, in as far as the demons were concerned? Thank you. Um, really, that was the period when the ZMDC now were in charge of the mining operations, as I indicated. Uh, perhaps what we should have done was before this to, to try and refresh each other's minds on perhaps the briefings which were given or were not given. I would want to believe that uh, when one takes into account the elaborate system of briefings which exist in the department, uh, that we would have at some point at least mentioned that there was some claim in Chiazwa to which we were part with the ZMDC and there should be some operations which are taking place. But then anyway, Vamtasa is my senior and I don't want to argue on this. That's basically what I'll say. Thank you.
that question. Let me answer it in very clear terms. The minister was briefed. And if you noticed the carefulness with which I considered that question, I didn't just answer it myself only. I consulted the director to my right. Because briefings which are given, even when somebody arrives, and so on and so forth. So the minister was briefed. So you realize that in your great presentation you gave, you are prevaricating. No, I am not prevaricating on anything. Maybe I'll explain to you what prevaricating means in terms of attending all the rules. Since you're a lawyer, you can also understand. So that everybody understands that you cannot prevaricate when you are before us. Nothing. One statement remains that. Yes. And if you prevaricating, So you see now we have a situation where the minister clearly under officers, you know, he never knew about this, he was not briefed. But then came to you again and then you said yes, you can confirm that the minister was not briefed because there were many ministers changing. You mentioned the uh, minister of coming in for a certain state, the minister Sekemai came in and so forth. I, I pay attention to issues that you raise and I'm just trying to go back to the narration of what you presented before us. Okay. That ministers come and go, yes, we agree, and uh, a, a, a minister just says, I was not briefed about it. And you had, I agreed on that, that yes, clearly, uh, that was not that. Then you now say, the minister was briefed. Okay, Mr. Uh, 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think there is the issue of the time. Okay, frames. That is what I was okay, explaining. Okay. The time time uh, frames you, which way yes. I think I've got enough for the let me go to Mr. Tasa. Mr. Tasa, the former minister. Sorry, I didn't follow your last part of the question. The DG uh, is stating that he did review of going on of the Kusena concession that CIO had, contrary to you uh, saying that uh, you were not going about that. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I think if you recall, the DG said the question of diamond mining came in 2011, and I was not minister at that time. And when I went back into the ministry in 2013, it was only for a short time and I believe that the briefings might have been done to the minister who was in office then, uh, and perhaps that uh, is the matter that you need to clear. But definitely I want to repeat for the third time that I didn't know anything about us as the president's department <coughs> mining any diamonds. And as a matter of fact, it was a matter that I used to, to trouble the president about because there were others who were being given concession. And I was wondering why we didn't get any. And the president could have told me too that, ah, by the way, you got it. But he didn't. The only thing I want to confirm is the briefings that you get of this nature, and they are also in black and white. Is there a report which is submitted to you as Minister of State Security on the operations of the Director General in terms of whatever they do? Mr. Chairman, not during my tenure of uh, office, as stated. It, there were no reports in black and white, except of uh, incidents that uh, may be under investigation. Those were the, you can find reports on that. But uh, on this briefing, I do not think there was any. I think. We will make progress. We have heard, uh, uh, we will, we will make progress on that. Uh, I think I think a number of issues are coming to you to deliberate this. <clears throat> um, what clarity do you need? You know, when you're given an opportunity to speak as chair, I think let's focus to issues. Thank you, Chair. Madam. Patao Pambashtao, Pambotara, former minister of Amtasa. What you want dance, what you want to work on? Lakango swings up at Avanokara, a such a race of my diamonds. Sakamponzo, good Pavana, a director, good issue, a Nepamuru Kudere, Makava briefer, says to us a tower of Vakangos, Nusaka Kungo, Digi. I think honorable Governor, as chair, Mr. Fumani Santas did not say that. I know that when outlets proceed, let's go to the police. You are a joint venture partner with the, with the ZMDC if there is the issue of I certainly had uh, we have done uh, state security uh, we, we are going to the police now and then and we will do we will do defense because we others are not here who what should be here in the case. But we will come to you uh, on the second line. You did uh, uh, listen to the presentation by the former chairman in terms of the joint venture uh, partner you with 
manager in the industry, can you please respond to the aspect of the diamond the production that you had been given to as a concession? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I think uh, the issue of Jinyame is a bit <coughs> peculiar in that, uh, yes, uh, there, were local, there was a local partnership in Ghanaians, Ghanaians who had the undertaking to fund the operations from onset. So, and uh, we went into a JV with uh, ZMDC, just, just giving a brief narrative of the history. Uh, in the process, I would agree with uh, Mr. Masimirian, but that in the process, we were then told not in writing, though, that the police are being given uh, a shareholding, a free carry shareholding, which was initially 5%, not the 10%. It moved from 5% to 10% and then 20% in the space of a week. And these were all uh, uh, verbal communications. At one time, I know that together with the Ghanaians, we had now declined that we were not happy to proceed. However, after meeting the then minister... Where the chairman, uh, as he narrated, as, okay. as he was, okay. so the chairman uh, can, uh, then conveyed the information to us. At one time, we actually would, were not happy to proceed, as uh, stated. However, after meeting with the then Minister Mpofu, uh, an agreement was that, look, uh, they will continue. Uh, and just also, the JV agreement had a condition, a condition precedent uh, that uh, we bring in five million before we even start. Uh, and that condition precedent was met. But however, over the course of the, the agreements, we finished the, the committee with the, with the various agreements. Uh, over the course of, of mining, an investment of 110 million was supposed to be done. So that uh, we, we began mining, and uh, from the onset, I think uh, for us it was unfortunate, we, we started with an albatross around our neck. We had the police, we had high expectations, and not only high expectations, but we felt the way they pushed, they felt the concession was theirs. So we are not so sure what communication was done to them because their behavior was that this concession was theirs. Uh, Block G, we were awarded the, the, the conclusion of our, of our special grant was only done end of tw beginning of 2012. And immediately what we started doing was secure the concession. This was just basically a bush, unlike other concessions for those that are familiar with Chiazwa. Mbada was already uh, active before Mbada was awarded. Many other concessions, people had a fair understanding that they were definitely guaranteed uh, alluvial diamonds on those particular con concessions. But as for Block G, which is at the tail end of Chiazwa, uh, 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 right at the, uh, at the confluence of uh, Sabi, uh, Sabi and, uh, and Odzi River, it was just a bush. And we had to create road networks. And then after that, it was not going to make sense for us to immediately start putting in money before we verify whether they were indeed diamonds, as uh, you heard from the uh, former DG, that they, on, they, they only discovered later that they were not, di they were not, not uh, alluvial diamonds of any substance after an investment was already done. For us, we then decided to do exploration. And uh, we, con we, we, we actually contracted SRK International to do the exploration for us, a process that took about six months. Uh, once that was concluded around July, August 2012, uh, we then decided to order our own DMS. But SRK had already told us that they, it was not total, they had not totally completed. All they were giving indications was definitely their diamond bearing grains on our concession. And we ordered a DMS, a smaller one initially, 20 ton. However, at that stage also, our Ghanaian partners were struggling with bringing in capital. And uh, there are other issues, I think, uh, which were quite documented in terms of illegal. Part, some of them were involved in illegal gold dealings, but that's another story. Uh, at the end of the day, we managed to bring in, we raised money locally. They had already contributed some money from Ghana, but when, 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 when they could no more do that, we raised money as part of the investors, uh, as the locals. We borrowed money from the banks that enabled us to bring in uh, the 20 ton DMS, which was uh, top end because it had everything the, the, the sort house, uh, grizzly machine, it had everything adjoined to it. Uh, we also put in place uh, water, water tanks, uh, and various other ancillary equipment on site. However, at that same time, uh, you find that the police, I refer to the police because our understanding it was the police. Uh, although the, the, their presentation in terms of Sierra 14s they produced to us as uh, investment vehicles, uh, they had no police officer on them, but uh, that's for them to answer. Uh, 
they then opted that they didn't want the Ghanaians anymore. And I remember a particular day on a Saturday in October, I documented very well uh, because I received various phone calls uh, with uh, one of the advisors to the then uh, Commissioner General telling me that I should dismiss the Ghanaians, of which I refused. I think it's important to tell us who the is. Uh, it was Farahim Tamangira. It was Farahim Tamangira who then told me that, look, we, ne we needed to get rid uh, of, of the Ghanaians, of which I flatly refused because they had made their own contribution. We were a partnership. They had their own investor. That's what they had actually indicated. The investor was a company called Solel, based in Singapore. We understand they actually did the due diligence. Under what auspices, again, they will be able to answer. Uh, we fought that uh, viciously because already we were disadvantaged. We started off with a 20%, unlike other investors of free carry, and immediately employed in excess of 140 personnel in terms of security, of which half of that was already, were, were people who were already current serving uh, police officers whom we were paying uh, or salaries, which salaries which were already dictated. Uh, so for us already there was an element that we're being set up to fail. You find the frustrations why Mr. Masimbo was at MDC sometimes then wrote us letters saying that we're not happy with your progress. But uh, the hemorrhage in terms of financial for a company that has not started operation was severe. Anybody who has gone into project will find that, that there's no need to have severe uh, overheads before you actually start producing. However, we actually strive, uh, we strove to finish off the project. Beginning of 2013, our DMS was delivered, was delivered in February. And uh, our, uh, the, 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 the people who, uh, who, whom we bought it from South Africa uh, managed to assemble it on site and production started in March, just before Easter in uh, 2013. And at that point, uh, the squad was then, uh, the shareholder issues rose again through the ZRP, who then spoke to the Ghanaians. The Ghanaians had been, part of them, part of them had been already expelled from the country because of uh, our illegal gold dealings. But they turned around the situation and they said, look, the locals want to dismiss you, so get rid of the locals. And sadly, the Ghanaians obliged initially but they didn't have money because the money we, we were now using was local money raised by us. And when the banks realized this is what had happened, they stopped financing Jinyami. And they were stuck, the police and the Ghanaians, with no money. And the Ghanaians were dismissed. Immediately they were dismissed, I think around July, uh, June, July of 2013, they were dismissed. But prior to that, in April, uh, going to the matter that uh, Mr. Masimirangwa raised, uh, a group of police officers, about eight or seven of them, came to our offices. At that point, I'd gone to pick up my child from school, uh, and they demanded to see me. The guys uh, at the office tried to tell them that, look, I wasn't in the office, but they said they wanted to speak to me. So eventually they spoke to me, and I told them I was at my child's school, uh, of which they told me to wait there. They waited there. There were three cars, uh, two police, police officers armed. I think I've got their names. Uh, there was a chief uh, superintendent... Uh, Dube and the detect detective inspector McCarthy, two of them armed, got into my car, and their main mandate was they'd been told that they must retrieve the dot box keys from me. I initially, I was very, uh, say, very vicious, and I said, no, I would not hand them over. Uh, there was no need for me to do that. Uh, this is a plant that we had purchased using funds raised by us. Why would I hand over? Mining was now happening. I was going to be accountable. If they were going to take over the keys, let there be a proper handover, takeover, but they wouldn't listen to that. So they said they would drive with me, drop off my kid at home, and it was a convoy, the three cars in my car. We dropped off my child at, at home. They were together with me, and then we went to the, uh, to the Sivira building in town. Uh, I was detained there for a couple of hours, uh, which they kept on asking for the keys. I was refusing with the keys until eventually I was taken into a dark room and... Uh, yeah, forced to hand over the keys. At that point, I had to hand over. There was no legal representation. Nobody was allowed to see me. I had to hand over the keys, uh, and that was it. As to what then transpired to the, to, the, to, the, to the stones that we had mined, I have no idea. But what we did immediately the following day, we wrote a letter, copied to the Commissioner General of Police, whose name was being used as that is the one we has ordered. Uh, that particular retrieval of the dot box keys. 
but we copied as well, we copied uh, the president's office. I think uh, Mr. Bonyonge was then the D former DG, you might recall, uh, we wrote a letter to him, we wrote a letter to the then minister, Obet Mpofu, we wrote a letter to, to various people, just alerting them that, look, we have no control whatsoever anymore as to what is happening on concession G, block G, which is Jinyame. And from there, absolutely, with no control, the Ghanaians also left. So the police were there alone uh, from about May, June 2013, right up to a period when uh, creditors, whom we were paying before, then made representations and the company was put under judicial management, I think around uh, 20, towards the end of 2014. By then, uh, the new minister, Shidakwa, had come in and he was already speaking about consolidation. So then at that point, the police were then abruptly stopped from whatever they were doing. They continue mining. We don't know what happened and uh, what then transpired with the stones. So basically, in terms of compliance, uh, I would say genuinely legally, we complied in terms of capital uh, injection. Uh, like I mentioned before, we were at our formative stage when the <coughs> consolidation came into place. There was no way uh, we were expected to operate at the same level with Anjin. DMC or Mbada. We had just started and still really uh, discovering what was on site. Uh, plans were very clear. I think we have evidence that we had already ordered a 50 ton DMS. So our growth was quite progressive that we are going to be able to get to a, a, a satisfactory level of production. But for us, we would not have achieved it because of the shareholder issues that uh, we then uh, uh, encountered. I think, in, in summary, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, that's the story of Virginia. I'll finish you with supporting documents. I'll finish the committee with uh, supporting documents of what was, done, what was on the ground uh, in terms of Virginia, what development we did on the ground. We built houses. Uh, there was road networks. Everything was there. There was a pipeline. We can, we can finish that information. And up to that, we never realized a single cent from our investment up to now. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, just one question. When you minister of state security, did you get any briefing on the time of concession that uh, uh, has been mentioned? Did you know about it? Honorable Chairman, Honorable members of this committee. Thank you. Honorable Chairman, Honorable members of this committee, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, yes, I got a briefing from the DG about going forward. Okay, thank you. Uh, we shall break for lunch after such a, a short answer. Right at quarter past, uh, we need to uh, really not take anything. People might think Parliament makes you stay. You know, you also have the rights to eat, so this is lunch time. Let's get back to quarter past. Thank you very much. Quarter past two. For lunch.
Go up, up, slide, slide, go up, up. Robert, go up, up, on the tray, up, up. Parvita. Thank you. 